Part 1. Topic. Military veteran survives two combat deployment came back home to his wife that wants open marriage. I am writing this because this is the worst pain and worst feeling I have ever experienced in my life. I guess I needed to write this story and maybe get some guidance from a community because books and therapy just don't feel like enough. For reference, we do not have kids. Here is my story. We have been married almost 13 years now and haven't been without our problems. I'm an emotionally closed off army vet with PTSD and she has her own anxiety issues. This led to a lot of not communicating our needs over the years and assuming what the other is thinking. September 2020, I get a call from my mom saying that my grandmother's cancer has returned and she has maybe days left. I knew I needed to be there for my grandmother and for my mom. I immediately let my wife know what is going on. She encourages me to be there for my family and she will hold down things at home. Later that night my wife approached me and told me she was extremely unhappy with the state of our marriage. It took me a second to change gears from my dying grandmother to what my wife just said but I quickly realized where she was going. As I said, we have not been without our problems. Our lack of communication over the years has led to many issues such as feeling disconnected from each other, poor routines, lack of closeness, and even dead bedroom. I am no stranger to harsh situations like this, having survived two combat deployments when I was in the military. My solution when I am depressed is to emotionally tune out the world and keep moving forward. I know this isn't good, but this is how I started surviving the depression I was feeling from our lack of physical and emotional intimacy. My wife's solution to her depression was to assume the worst and believe she was unwanted by me. Like I did not want to be with her, and I can see that, given how we kept ignoring our problems. She also assumed maybe she was the problem, and I wasn't attracted to her. Our lack of emotional and physical intimacy just built up over the years, and we each became too afraid to bring it up and rock the boat. When it finally is brought up, we have big fights and then try therapy or a book or something. This led to talking about feelings equals fights. So, back to that night, she told me she was unhappy with the state of our marriage, and she couldn't take it anymore. She wanted me to really think about what I wanted while I was out of state to be with my grandmother. She said she was so unhappy with the lack of intimacy that she was even considering an open marriage. I told her I was extremely unhappy with the lack of intimacy as well and I believed that both of our needs were not being met and neither one of us ever brought it up. I told her I was not interested in an open marriage and said we can find some way to repair our communication. I promised her that while I was away, I would think hard on the reasons why I was so emotionally tuned out a lot of the time and I wanted her to think about the reasons why she didn't communicate with me. We agreed to this. While I was out of state to be with family in crisis, I started journalist at night trying to get in touch with myself. My days were spent sitting with my mom next to my grandmother in her hospice bed. It was all a lie. When I got home after burying my grandmother, things were immediately weird. My wife and I had not communicated very much while I was away. She needed space. As much as I needed her while I was dealing with the loss of my grand, I tried to be respectful. After two weeks of being home, early in October 2020, I was suspicious of my wife. She was always on her phone texting with her guy friend. Her phone never left her sight. She was distant from me in a way I had never felt before. I decided just to look at the phone records and see if I was making something of nothing. There it was, an eight-hour phone call the day I flew out in September followed by over 1,000 text messages that ranged from daytime into the late hours of the night. Since our phone plan was in my name and I owned the account, I had everything back up to the cloud and always meant to turn that off but never did. I made the dive. It took me three days to go through everything I found and I had to do it in private. She was having an affair it started prior to me even leaving. The woman I never thought would ever do something like this. The worst part was it wasn't only a sexual affair, it was also an emotional affair. She fell in love with her AP, where I failed to be an emotional person with her. Some other person swooped in. I approached her and at first, she denied everything. When I told her I had her text and pictures backed up, she admitted it. She said she would not break contact with her AP and that would be a deal breaker. This hurt even worse. I was in so much pain I shut down completely. I started individual therapy through the VA to try to cope and she continued on with her AP. She was unsure if she wanted to try with me or leave me for her AP. For the next two and a half months I begged her to break contact with her AP. I told her how much it was hurting me. I wanted her to start therapy with me and try to figure this mess out. She kept refusing. By December 2020 my heart couldn't take any more. I was taking anxiety med every six hours just to survive. My job performance was falling apart. I finally realized I did not deserve to be treated like this. I looked up information on divorce and found out what I needed to do. Now I just needed to tell her. I was trying to muster up the strength to tell her when she approached me and said she wanted to try with me. 
I was immediately filled with relief and also confusion. She finally wanted to try with me and give up her AP which was great, but I had already mentally made a decision. I decided our marriage was worth trying for, especially since only part of me wanted the divorce. It took her until the end of December for her to finally break it off with her AP. Their bond was so strong that she and her individual therapist decided it was best to slowly break it off. She kept telling me how important her AP was to her, and it was hard to break their connection. She loved him and still loves him. This is why she wanted an open marriage before, to be with her AP openly. How do I wrap my head around any of this? From January 2021 until today, we are in couples therapy, and both in individual therapy, and have gone through many of the recommended readings such as the Michelle Weiner Davis book. The affair ended at the end of December but for me it just happened, and I am still living in it. I am emotionally and mentally stuck in the days I discovered everything and how I was treated afterwards. I have told my wife that part of me wants to try to work things out and part of me just can't get past what happened. She has admitted her feelings for the AP are still there and she can't do things that remind her of him because it makes her upset. This makes it even harder, knowing your wife loves another man and has someone else in her heart. I have had zero movement with this. She tells me she is hanging on as long as she can. But the limbo is extremely difficult for her since I don't know if I want to continue the marriage or not. I feel guilty for not knowing. I am so hurt and torn apart by everything but part of me still loves her and wants to try. My head is spinning every day and I feel lost. Our couple's therapist has said I should have had more movement even though it hasn't even been three months since the affair ended. This has me feeling like I am delaying things and torturing my wife by being indecisive. We are still doing therapy and talking openly. I haven't yelled at her once and have been respectful while making sure she understands my feelings. This is important to me. I know she is remorseful, and I can see the pain in her eyes, and she has been doing everything right since January to make me comfortable. I have full access to her phone and emails, and we talk constantly now. I just feel like there's a giant voice in my head saying not to let anyone treat you this way. Like a giant hill I cannot climb over. My heart is sunken, my chest hurts, and my shoulders are heavy. I don't know when I will know if I can get past this or not or even live with what happened. As I said before, I am still stuck in feeling like it just happened. I have never felt betrayal before. I have been doing Ender with my individual therapist where for some of the first times in my life, I have broken down and started crying. Both my parents were military as well, so crying was something I never knew was okay to do. If you have read this far, thank you for listening to my scrambled thoughts. I guess I needed to get this out and see what other people's thoughts are. Is it normal to be stuck and undecided on staying or going? Is it normal to feel like you are still in divorce day? I feel like my wife is two people, one I love and one who betrayed me, and I can't trust. I needed her when my grandma was dying, and she was with another man. I have never felt so much pain in my life. My life is a living hell and I'd rather be back in combat with my fellow soldiers. Comment, I really do think you've fallen victim to a crummy therapist. A good one would never have counseled your wayward wife to take her time breaking up with her AP, nor would your recommended reading be anything by Michelle Weiner Davis. What did her therapist think would be happening to you while your wayward wife strung you along like that? And what in the name of all that's holy could she be thinking by inferring that you are the one with the problem because you're not over it yet? Of course, you're not over it. For the vast majority of us, it's a two to five year process to recover from the trauma of intimate betrayal. And here you are, already a victim of PTSD. This must have done a number on your brain. I'm just so disgusted with that therapist for not taking the appropriate care in your therapy. First off, if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. He's inarguably the world's leading expert on trauma. I think you'll get a lot out of it, and I think you'll begin to understand that your reaction has been normal. Your amygdala was probably already touchy because of your previous PTSD. You poor man, they must have gone berserk with this latest trauma. No wonder you're living between dosages of anti-anxiety medication. They must be buzzing you all day long with adrenaline and cortisol. Keep in close contact with your medical doctor. You need to keep that stress level manageable, right? Is it normal to be stuck and undecided on staying or going? Is it normal to feel like you are still in divorce day? Yes, and yes. It's the trauma response which keeps you feeling like it's divorce day. Betrayal trauma isn't too much different than other forms of PTSD. Events seem current, and when you read that book, I recommend it, you'll see it's ubiquitous. Our sense of time gets messed up. It's like, if you can imagine a leaf floating gently down the stream, our leaf has been split in two, with one half floating with time and the other stuck to the bank where our trauma occurred. It makes everything seem kind of surreal. In terms of the normalcy of ambivalence, yeah, crazy normal. Even those of us who choose reconcile aren't really all in for quite some time. We may go with it in a fake it till you make it way, but yeah, 
One foot's out the door, and that's healthy. It takes time to know for sure if our wife will turn it around. Hell, they just ripped off their face right in front of us and showed us a monster we didn't know existed. It would be nuts to trust them without reservation afterwards. And once again, I'm so mad at your therapist for suggesting otherwise. What a quack. You're uncomfortable and you're going to stay uncomfortable until your wayward wife remediates the poor character which allowed her to say yes to perfidy. She needs to take real responsibility for that without blaming it on you, or your marriage, or your SX life, or anything else. None of this is your fault. Cheating is 100% about the cheater. You are in the same marriage she was, and you didn't cheat. It's about character. It's about the gap between a wife's stated values and their actual deeds. Your wayward wife has a but in her core value of fidelity. That is, she believes in fidelity, but not if she's unhappy or whatever. You see how that works, right? You and I don't have a but. In our core value of fidelity, we have a so. That is, we believe in fidelity, so we don't put ourselves in risky situations with people of the opposite SX. This is the boundary. We build these boundaries around our core beliefs in order to protect them. It's intuitive. We don't sit around thinking about it, but it gets done. For cheaters, not so much. Their core values are weak and permeable. They haven't spent too much time thinking about what they truly believe in and what value they place on those beliefs. I can't be made to cheat with a gun to my head. My core values are strong. My boundaries surrounding them are tall and inflexible. You see how that works? It wasn't your fault. The failure is with your wayward wife and in how she interacts with her own values, belief system. You didn't cause that. You couldn't have fixed it. And you couldn't have stopped it. And it's not your fault now that you're not over it. You know intuitively that even if your WW is remorseful, she hasn't done the real work to remediate her broken character. That's what underlying your ability to move forward. Your therapist has jacked up your process with faulty theory. The unmet needs model. I'm going to repost something I wrote for another thread. But it's all about unmet needs and even though it might not all apply to you, I hope you'll see what a bogus piece of junk psychology it is. Your MC is full of crap and you'd do well to fire him. Her. Let me tell you how I know. My own wife went on a Craigslist binge six years ago. Multiple partners. Various degrees of emotional attachment. He even thought he was in love at one point. But ten years before that, I'd caught him out in some online shenanigans. PRN, cybersex, emotional affair, etc. In fact, I caught him out only two weeks before a planned meetup. I'd already seen an attorney before I confronted him and I was bent on divorce. But he pretty much cried his way out of it, and I settled on MC. As you might have guessed already, we two were bamboozled with the unmet needs model of therapy, which sounds so reasonable. I upped my wife game and did my best pick me polka. But within a couple of years, he was right back at it behind my back. By the time we reached the 10-year mark, he had screwed up his nerve to go live and in person on Craigslist. Of course, I was pretty shocked as you might imagine. I thought we were good. I thought his needs were met. Damned if I hadn't been turning myself inside out for a decade to make sure. Right? The more I thought about it, the more I revisited what I knew about the unmet needs model, the less it made sense. I was doing everything right and he still chose to cheat. Here's the fly in the unmet needs ointment. Healthy adults don't need to be validated. They validate internally. Healthy adults are self-fruitful in the matter of contentment and life satisfaction. And when things come up which make them unhappy, they address the cause and solve the problem. OTOH. The vast majority of cheaters cheat because they're seeking external validation. They are not emotionally healthy. They can't do it on their own. They've got a hole inside them, and no amount of external validation will fill it. Certainly, the old and familiar validation of a spouse doesn't get the job done. Our kibbles are stale and boring. They don't create enough adrenaline anymore to make the cheater feel special. It's like getting an attaboy from your mom, right? This is old pop spy which is still being taught in schools and still selling books. But it's BS. Nothing you can do can make another person throw away their core values and do something that's in this kind of opposition to good character. If you're a person who believes in fidelity, who values fidelity, you don't cheat. End of story. Because when we truly value something we protect it. The cheater has a but in his value system. That is E. I believe in fidelity, but not if my needs aren't being met. For people like you and me, we have a so in our value system. That is, I believe in fidelity, so I don't put myself in risky situations with the opposite SX. This is the boundary we create organically. We don't sit around planning it out. It just happens because it's innate to our character to protect what we value. The cheater doesn't have those boundaries because he doesn't really honor his values. He only claims to. I'm not saying that your marriage is over or that your wife can't change. What I am saying though is that this unmet needs model is not going to challenge him to clean up his flawed character. In fact, it allows him to offload responsibility onto the marriage and onto you.
It's not your job to make him feel. It never was. It's his job to control his feelings. You could have been doing everything exactly perfect for the entire length of your marriage, and he would still have cheated, because there's nothing in his character stopping him and he has no coping mechanism to fall back on when he feels invalidated, inadequate, unappreciated, etc. It's his job to see that his needs get met. Sometimes that might mean negotiating with you, say if it's about SX or about the division of labor in your home etc. But sometimes, it might mean that what he sees as a need is unhealthy in an adult, like external validation through attention and flattery. MCs are there to treat the marriage. The marriage is the client. So, of course they're going to talk about communications, resentments and expectations. The MC doesn't want to alienate anyone, so as he's looking to find balance on both sides. But marriages don't cheat. People do. The only way your WH is going to make a change that safeguards against further perfidy is by correcting his need for external validation and becoming an emotionally healthy adult whose deeds are as good as his word. No excuses, just honoring the things he claims to value. For that, I would recommend I see with a therapist who is well versed in adultery. The last thing any newly minted BS needs is to walk into an MC's office, believing that they've come to safe harbor and being handed a copy of the five love languages or some other unmet needs gobbledygook. It would be really nice if we actually did have the power to control our mate by giving them acts of service or words of affirmation. But sadly, we aren't gods who can stop a cheater from seeking out his, her choice of adrenaline rush and new kibbles. Although, this kind of pop spy suggests that their behavior is somehow our responsibility. The more you dig into this ridiculous line of thought, the more absurd it becomes. Anyway, sorry for the lengthy post. Nothing fries my ass more than seeing new BSs being sold this bill of goods. Anyway, I know I posted a tome, but my advice to you is to fire the bad therapist and get in with someone who is trained. And even then, beware of that unmet needs jargon. You want someone who puts the responsibility for cheating 100% on the cheater because marriage don't cheat. People do. And when they do, they need to dig deep and find out why they allowed cheating to be a choice. You might also add not just friends by Shirley Glass to your reading list. It's a good book and her work on boundaries through her walls and windows technique is invaluable. Remember that leaving is also a viable option. No cheater is owed a second chance. Sometimes, when you've ruled out everything else, the cheating was just a deal breaker. Some people are built like that and there's no shame in it. The best bet is to take your time and keep your options open until you really do know your own mind on that. Strength to you as you process and don't let those therapists push you around. You are enough and you intuitively know what's working and what's not. Trust yourself. Original poster, thank you for your book recommendation and for the long response. I really appreciate you taking the time to explain your points. Everything is surreal. I am barely functioning at anything right now, just trying to do what I think is right. I'm normally pretty healthy but can barely exercise or eat right. It feels like years have passed and I have aged myself. Comment, fall back to your military training and experience. This is a war more than a battle and wars take time. Right now, nobody can tell you how this will end but it will take time. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't have the stamina or ability to see this through. You know that from the military, the importance of preparing, training, pacing yourself, nutrition, sleep, active duty and rest and recreation. If you can then start exercising, even a 30 minute walk will help. Take care to eat, preferably healthy but anything nourishing will do. Drink, preferably water but stay off booze. A beer won't kill you, but strictly limit your consumption. Be mentally awake, sinking into the blues. Keep mentally active to snap out of it. Rest and rest like you are off duty. If you are having a hard time sleeping, get some mild sleeping aids. You as a rested, fed and fit man can much better handle the tough times ahead. Original poster, thanks for this reminder. I am in a fog of poor exercise and poor nutrition and part of me wants to go buy alcohol. But I have resisted. I have started to talk walks with my wayward wife and I'm slowly trying to do some pull-ups and push-ups. But everything just seems pointless and tiresome. Is extreme exhaustion a normal part of this too? I feel so mentally tired and sometimes just want to pretend none of this is happening. Comment, sorry for the situation you are in. First of all, everything you feel is normal. This is the one of the worst traumas a person can experience. Nothing can be an excuse for cheating. This is 100% your wayward wife's stupid choice. And she did it in the worst possible way, at a time when she should comfort you for your grandma's loss. Worse, she turned this into an opportunity to enjoy her affair with her AP comfortably. I don't know the person you love, but you have one wife, and this is her. She shows her personality by her acts. 
and about her affair. Do you know when and how it started? Who the AP is? Is he married or not, etc. It was bad that she suddenly said she wanted to try again when you were going in the right direction after the initial shock was over. Do you know the reason for that when she was so in love with her AP? And you say she is still in love with him. This doesn't seem reasonable. The AP may have left her for some reason. Maybe he is married. If so, you should inform his wife. This is very important. Are you sure her individual therapist suggested breaking off slowly? Who told this to you? And how is this slow break-off process? Has the affair continued? Have you considered whether you really wanted this marriage or not? What will it gain and cost you if you continue? While describing the per-affair situation, you explain that both of you are so unhappy that even then it feels like you are about to divorce. So why do you still want to try it when the situation has gotten worse? Your answer to this must satisfy you, and her answer too. She doesn't even love you and in love with someone else. Sorry, but she has nothing to do with remorse at all. Are you sure that the pain you see in her eyes is for you suffer she caused by her affair? May she not be mourning her love for a pee. I wish you the best. Original poster. Thank you for your reply and for saying what I feel is normal. It's very validating. I know when and how. It actually started in July, in my opinion, when innocent texting with a guy friend crossed into flirty. By August, he was the sympathetic ear to hearing her talk about our marriage problems. I found the entire conversations due to having our phones back up, so I had to watch it gradually unfold. The AP is not married as far as I know. My wayward wife told me this was the plan created by her therapist since the break-off would be painful. I immediately said this was wrong and it angered me. It was everything I could do just to hang on at this point. The break-off process was slow, and the worst part for me, I knew they were still communicating, and I couldn't handle it. I ranged from mentally shutting down to leaving the house, but leaving the house led to its own paranoia. I continued to watch her phone, emails, text, and any program she installs. I know I can't do this forever. Comment. I honestly don't know where to start. There is so much to address and so much to get across. Can we maybe start with one thing? There is an interesting thread in the Wayward Forum called The Tipping Point. B-C-A-R-E-F-U-L-L. I am H-O that forum is the bravest and most delicate of our forums here and each and every forum deserves the respect and the rules it goes by. In that thread there is discussion on when the issues are infidelity related and when the issues are marriage related. Once again, be careful in that forum and do not post. I have been here for ages and still post extremely carefully in that forum due to the different factors that apply there. In that forum some of us have made the distinction between marital issues and the issues that make the wife decide to have an affair. What most of us agree on is that there is nothing you did that made your wife have an affair. Be very clear on that. Her D-E-C-I-S-S-I-O-N to cheat hasn't got anything to do with you being emotionally unavailable. Had she decided to file for divorce, or had she decided to demand and enforce change, then yes, your actions, response, or inaction would explain why she carried that step further, why she filed or moved out or separated or whatever, but never to cheat. To put it in context, having an affair would be like responding to a Canadian Army unit accidentally straying over the border into Alaska by nuking Toronto. It's not a blame game. It's more that no matter what you do and no matter what you change then if she doesn't work on her internal demons and if you believe that your actions made her cheat, well, she will cheat again. She needs to totally 100% own the decision to cheat. Notice how I hammer on the D-E-C-I-S-S-I-O-N. This too needs to be clear. You both have to realize she had options. At some point she decided to cross some line into infidelity. Decisions are fine, even wrong decisions. But it's when we think things just happen where the problems occur. Just like she decided to cheat, she can decide to not cheat. There might have been steps on that decision. A glance, a brushing of hands, a holding of hands, a coffee date, a kiss. But still, a decision. Once again, 100% accountability. Be very careful about what she says about her IC. I think this is a pitfall many of us BS fall into. IC is for her. When she comes home from a session, then it's imperative that she follows the guidance offered. I personally doubt any IC would suggest weaning off an affair. Having her tell you this was done according to IC recommendation makes me doubt the IC or her truth. If this same IC has any role in your MC, her IC or your IC, I would raise the subject with the IC and get the truth. Did the IC really recommend a weaning off period? Another question to ask the MC, IC, is the infidelity your fault? If they even imply that yes, you are partially at fault, then look elsewhere. I compare this to when rape victims are blamed for wearing short skirts or not tending to their drinks or walking through a park after dark. None might be great ideas considering what took place, but none justify or explain why they were raped. Finally, just like she had choices and decided to cheat, you two have options. Your goal right now should not be to reconcile or to divorce. You can decide on that in a few weeks or even a couple of months. Even then you can change paths as you go along. 
What you should focus on is the destination rather than the path taken. The destination is to get out of infidelity, either eventually through reconciliation or divorce. Original poster, thank you again for the words of wisdom. My logical brain knows this is not my fault, but I have been shouldering responsibility anyway for some reason. My wayward wife hasn't been blaming me. I think my state of depression has me doing this. I have expressed my displeasure with her I see many times. Our MC is a different therapist and my IC is different and through the VA. My 99 is working on Ender with me to help me cope with this trauma. I appreciate this very much. I am so paranoid by making wrong decisions and putting unneeded pressure on myself. I need to breathe and allow myself to feel everything and process everything. It's really helpful to hear this from other people in the same or similar situations. I will focus on my Ender work and try to get out of the divorce day feeling for now and try to not focus on all the other thousand things floating in my head. Maybe this will help me not feel so crazy all the time. Comment, is extreme exhaustion a normal part of this too? Yes, it sounds like you've sunk down into a chemical depression, so I hope you're getting screening, treatment for that. Imagine the amygdala of your brain instructing the release of things like adrenaline and cortisol into your body over and over again, many times each day as you experience triggers and anxiety. Bear in mind that the amygdala can't tell the difference between clear, present danger, and an emotional reaction. It still sets you up to fight or flee in a physiological sense. Over time, this imbalance causes other imbalances in neurotransmitters, hormones, and adrenals. Next thing you know, it's not just the exhaustion of an adrenaline, cortisol burst you need to recover from. Everything is out of whack. Your IC at the VA can make referrals if you're not already being treated for depression. And if you are, talk to your prescribe about your current symptoms. You might need a change in med. It's good that you're staying away from alcohol. Many people don't realize it, but any relief you might have of your anxiety by imbibing is canceled out the next day. It's almost like an anxiety hangover. The anxiety is so much worse the next day than it was before. It's right about the exercise. You just have to make yourself do it. It will help with the depression and it's also going to help you to get better sleep. Often, people see improvements in self-esteem as well. I really think the priority needs to shift here from working on the marriage to getting you back on your feet. I'm not saying that you should throw in the towel. I'm just saying that getting you healthy needs to come first. Toward that end, maybe talk to your doctors and tweak med or whatever needs to be done and concentrate on self-care, meaning proper nutrition, hydration, exercise, and continued avoidance of alcohol. You're doing Ender and that's good, but it's also draining because it's an immersive therapy. So, special care to make sure that you're having a period of rest, relaxation, and positivist after each session. If you're not already journalist, consider giving it a try. Basically, you just pour all the poison, uncensored, onto the page. Follow each entry with some optimistic positives. It can be anything which makes you feel happy. Birdsong, the smell of fresh coffee or newly mowed grass, an affirmation that caught your eye. Anything, so long as it's uplifting. You're training your brain to search for optimism. You've got time to work out all the other stuff, and I'm not suggesting that you stop, only that you prioritize strengthening yourself. If you've got an inner critic yammering in your ear, try challenging his aspersions. That's basic CBT, right? Cognitive behavioral therapy. Our inner critic is all about making us feel bad, and he tell lies to get it done. Challenge those lies with the truth. Follow up with supporting facts. That is, your inner critic says that you are at fault for your wayward wife's adultery. Don't just take that lying down. You know that you don't have control over other people's choices. You know that you have no say over whether they honor their stated values or commitments. You know that there are always other options. She could have talked with you honestly about the outside attraction. She could have insisted on counseling. She could have packed a bag and left. But she didn't. She chose to cheat, to deny you of agency on a decision which affected your life. That's on her. Every time you catch your inner critic wailing in your ear about one of your alleged failings, challenge it with the truth. It's so important when you're caught in a depression to lift yourself up, because if you allow that unhappy voice in your ear to keep you down, you'll be extending the length and depth of depression. The body and the mind are connected. You'll see that clearly in Van der Kolk's book. So, just like the military advice Bigger gave you, double down by posting sentries and keeping your inner critic at bay. He's not there to help you. He's there to make you wallow and give up. He is the sickness. He is the depression. Fight him with facts. I know it doesn't feel like it today, but you're going to be okay. You're surrounded by people who have come through this, and you will too. Believe it and it will be true. Original poster, I want to thank you again. Your post about unmet needs and everything has had me thinking a lot about a lot. I have reread it many times. Would you mind going into a bit more detail about the flawed teachings of unmet needs or is that explained more in the books you recommended? 
I appreciate you and everyone here so far giving me good advice. It feels nice to feel validated and not crazy. Thank you again for all your information. We are in the unmet needs dance currently. I am worried that I can be emotionally open enough for my wayward wife. I'm a pretty stoic person by nature and my time in combat has enforced the strong silent type. I have my ways of showing love but it's different from what she needs and I'm trying to learn to adapt. We were recommended the five love languages book like you mentioned and we are both reading that. My wayward wife says she doesn't blame the unmet needs. She said she made a poor choice and at the time she used her unmet needs as validation for her choice. I'm going to be rereading and thinking everything over. Mentally, I am a disaster right now. It takes everything I have to get through work at a functional level. My virtues and boundaries are tall and strong like you said. I even have a virtues magnet on my fridge the warrior's nine noble virtues that my wayward wife gave me ages ago. This is why the struggle is so hard for me and the pieces don't fit. I was in the same unmet needs category as my wayward wife and I never even put myself in a precarious position. Thanks again for all your information and feedback. I am just navigating this entire mess and trying to find myself. Here thanks for your input and your appreciation. I will check out that article. Bonds formed in combat are intense and last forever. I do really miss that sometimes. I felt safe with my brothers and sisters when I was active duty. I put more value on friendships than some. When things were depressing and poor at home, I made more efforts to be with friends, always inviting my wayward wife. She didn't want to participate because she felt I wasn't focusing on us or the marriage and putting more emphasis on things outside of us like friends and activities, which I was. It was all I could do to fight off depression. I didn't know how to tell my wayward wife how depressed I was with the state of our marriage. If there's one thing the divorce day has taught me, it's to speak my mind at every moment. No more emotionally checking out because I'm upset. Trauma is such a beast. Comment. So, what is it that you feel like is keeping you stuck in the pain? Bear in mind that it's normal at this point. Healing is a two to five year process, but what's bugging you the most at this juncture? Very kind, LC. If I ever do write that book, it's going to be titled, Meeting Your Needs Like an Adult Without Effing Up Your Marriage and Traumatizing Your Spouse. Although, that might need some trimming. Original poster. I think what is bugging me the most is just how everything happened. It's difficult to put into words, but I'll try. My brain is scrambled eggs at this point. I came home after losing my grandmother and found my wayward wife had an entirely new life going on. One that started a few months before I left. Her new life was at the level that she was even talking to AP's mom about our issues and the AP's mom was supporting my wayward wife. Just trying to take this all in at the same time as meeting a monster who used to be my wife. I felt like I was falling down a hole and the person who always helped me through my toughest situations was now the enemy and couldn't pull me up. I am stuck feeling like I can't forgive and can't forget this. I know this event did a number on my brain because I am having war dreams again that I used to have after I got home from Iraq in 2005. These dreams only occur in times of immense stress and it's always the same dream with slight changes. I feel paranoid and unsafe and on guard all time because I can't handle getting hurt like this ever again and I'm afraid of it happening again. Despite the continued reassurance from my wayward wife, I am continuing Ember with my individual therapist and she has me focusing on only myself and healing the affair in myself and on my timeline. Perhaps when I remove more pressure and urgency and stop shouldering responsibilities that aren't mine, things will start to move. I'm going to look at the author you suggested. I do appreciate science-backed advice. I guess I still can't believe this happened and I'm worried about reconcile because I just feel completely and utterly abandoned. This is the worst experience in my life. My wayward wife knows I have one foot out the door at this point but with 12 years behind us, I'm trying to stick it out to see if reconciliation is possible. Listen to that voice. None of us should ever accept being treated with the disrespect and fidelity. However, this is not the real issue. It's if we want a divorce or if we want to attempt reconciliation. Yes, you do reconcile with the person that treated you that way. But by its very definition reconciling is reaching an agreement with whomever you are reconciling with. You don't have to reconcile with those that haven't done you any harm. If you and your wayward wife reconcile, then it's not an acceptance of that she did this to you, nor is it in any way or form telling her that it's okay to have an affair. I have told you this is a war. During wars, individual skirmishes and even individual battles aren't necessarily important. General Washington took part in more battles where he was on the losing side than where he won. Yet he won the war. He did so because he won the battles and skirmishes that mattered. This is a key issue IMHO. If you set off getting out of infidelity with the intention of winning every confrontation every day, you are doomed to fail. The goal should rather be that tomorrow you feel slightly better than today 
and that within a reasonable time he will realize you have survived infidelity. Is the affair over? Do you feel assured? Or do you have assurance that your wayward wife is not in contact with Om? How safe are you on that issue? The below advice is based on this being something you are feeling pretty safe about. One idea is to create a ceasefire. Maybe agree on a 30-day period where the only requirement you make to her is that there is total and absolute NC with Ah. That NC needs to be defined, like she can't talk to him, be around him, have him on social media, Google him, drive past his house, whenever you need to feel safe. That time needs to serve a purpose, like you are following our advice on exercising, eating, Resting, like you are gathering your wits and learning about infidelity, its consequences, what tools and methods are available to get out. You can talk about relationship issues, but it's not the focus. You can live together, eat, spend time together, sleep in the same bed. Only you two are not focusing on the relationship, but on personal healing. The key to this is her assurance that the affair is over. I mentioned earlier that you have options. Well, make it clear to her that you do have these options. Your choice right now is to see if you two can eventually work this out. But you also realize that the minute you don't think that's attainable, you have the option of filing for divorce. It's not something you ask her for, but something you do. But also make it totally clear to her that she too has the very same option. If she can't respect NC for 30 days, she always has the ability to tell you she's divorcing. There is nothing forcing her to be married to you. If Om is the dog's balls, then she can go to him right now because you neither want to nor are capable of forcing her to remain married. The realization of this freedom for both of you can be a major turning point. One thing you should do during the 30-day ceasefire is to read up and understand divorce in your area. Just as you research reconciliation, knowledge is power, uncertainty is fear. Knowing what you are facing, be it along the path of divorce or reconcile, is what will help you most in dealing with the issues. This is not saying you will or need to divorce. Look at it like learning first aid, something you do just in case you need it. Original poster, I appreciate your input and you are correct. I do feel like I am in war in a lot of ways, not that I want to be with my wife, but some days feel like that. I know the affair is completely over. We are both full-time work from home right now and I have kept tabs on her phone. She has been very willing to show me every time she gets a call or text, and we check in quite often. I do feel a sting when I hear her phone go off or even if she gets up in the night to use the bathroom, but from what I read, those feelings are normal for now. Our options have been made clear. I told her I am working on healing and working on myself, and I may or may not be able to get over this. She knows that. I have told her if she needs to go, I will respect that too. For now, it seems we both want to try to see if anything is salvageable. 